you're like Chris, but but that's Old Testament. You're preaching out of Nehemiah. That's Old Testament. That sounds really great. That sounds really great. Build, and that's how you win the fight. Don't fight, build. But the New Testament talks about spiritual warfare. True. True. But let me read you something from the New Testament, and I'll do you one better. I'm not just going to read out the New Testament. I'm going to read out of some red letters. That way, if you get really mad, you're just going to have to take it up with Jesus, okay? <laughs> Matthew 16, 18 says this. Upon this rock, I will, everybody say that with me. <laughs> upon this rock, I will. <laughs> upon this rock, I will. <laughs> and then you're going to fight? No, he says, on this rock, I will build my church. And what? All the powers of hell will not conquer it. See, the victory is in the building. That's why Jesus was a carpenter for 30 years and not a soldier. <laughs> because the victory is in the building. Build the kingdom. And as long as we build the kingdom, we'll win the fight. But if we stop building the kingdom so we can fight, we'll fight our whole lives and we'll never win. Jesus says, you're going to build my kingdom. I'm going to build my kingdom. And hell will lose. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. It's pretty great. That's not rocket science. That's like arithmetic. <laughs> Build the kingdom, hell will lose. <laughs> yeah. The key is he builds it. He designs it. And I have been on this journey for two years, searching the word of God, trying to figure out what is the church he's building. And I believe that what we're seeing in this moment is God returning his church back to the way he originally designed it. Built not on programs and buildings, but built on family and relationship. God calls Abraham out. And says, I'm going to make you two things. I'm going to make you a great family and a great nation. Jesus comes 2,000 years later. And that great family and great nation had become a great religion. That had mixed up their worship and their politics. So Jesus comes. And I want you to see this. He doesn't try to fix it. And if something is so far gone that Jesus doesn't try to fix it, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I shouldn't try to fix it. But then Jesus says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 12 dudes. And it wasn't just 12 dudes. He didn't just have 12 disciples. They only counted men in those days. We think Peter, James, and John was his inner circle. But he actually had another three people that were in a circle. They just didn't count at that time. Their names were Mary Magdalene, Mary his mom, and Salome. And they were every bit his inner circle disciples as Peter, James, and John. They were everywhere. You, you look in the Bible. They were, they were all over the place. In fact, when Peter, James, and John, well, yeah, when, they, when Peter and James at least ran off and didn't show up at the crucifixion, guess who was there? Three days later, at the empty tomb, John was even there. Guess who was there? Yeah. If you wonder why this is important to me, I'm a dad of five daughters. <laughs> and I want my daughters to grow up in a world where they would never be limited in what God can do to them 
because of their gender. It's very important to me. So two of them are here this morning. So Nadia is my oldest. Raise your hand. And then my second oldest, Trinity, there. She raised her hand. And then the other one that also looks like my daughter, but she's my personal assistant, Diane. <laughs> But God doesn't want us to be confused about what he's building. Nehemiah wasn't confused about what he's building. He says, build the church. So Jesus takes these guys, these disciples, he says, I'm going to do two things in you. I'm going to build you a great family. See, he goes back to the original word he gives Abraham. I'm going to make you a great family, but this time... He says, I'm not going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make you a great kingdom. I'm going to build a kingdom. And here we are 2,000 years later. And wouldn't you believe it? Just like Jesus came 2,000 years after Abraham and their great family and great nation became a great religion. Here we are 2,000 years after Jesus and the great family and great kingdom has become another great religion. And I think God is raising up a generation right now who's not distracted by the fights, by the division, by the instability, by the confusion. But you can recognize this moment we're in. That not just in America, but all over the world, God is building his church. A church ruled by one law. A young ruler comes up to Jesus and says, what's the most important commandment? There were 719 of them. Which one? He just wanted to trap them. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do these two things, you fulfill all the commandments. But then, that was Judaism. But then, Jesus is in the last supper or in the upper room the night before he dies. And, you know, if you know you're going to die the next day and you're with your closest friends, you're not going to shoot the breeze and talk about sports, right? right. You're going to talk about important things. And he looks at them. He says, I want to actually tell you that in my kingdom, you won't just be my servants. You'll be my friends. And you're my friends as long as you do what I command you. But before you get all twisted up and go, oh, no, he's going to slap on us another 719 laws. He goes, no, 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 you're my friends if you do what I command you. But my commandment is one, one commandment. I want you to love each other the way, not the way you love you. I want you to love each other the way I love you. And he says, that's the one law. And then he says, because... People will know that you're my disciples, not by your theology, not by your seminary degree, not by how long you've been in church, not by whether you're on the worship team, not by whether you've been teaching Sunday school, no matter how many prophetic words you gave. No, 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 no. He says, they will know you're my followers by what? The way you love, not him, each other. If that was a one-question final exam that the American church was taking, what grade do you think we'd have right now? 